St. Gregory the Great stands as a pivotal figure in the history of the Catholic Church. His papacy from 590 to 604 AD marked a period of significant change and consolidation for the Church in the West. Gregory's contributions were multifaceted, ranging from his theological writings to his administrative reforms, his missionary zeal, and his efforts to preserve classical learning amidst societal upheaval. Known for his piety, wisdom, and tireless work for the Church, Gregory left an indelible mark on the development of Western Christianity. His title, The Great, is a testament to the respect and admiration he garnered, both during his lifetime and throughout the centuries that followed. Born in Rome around the year 540 AD, Gregory hailed from a wealthy and influential patrician family, the Gens Anicia. His father, Gordianus, held the prestigious office of senator, while his mother, Silvia, was a woman of deep faith, later canonized as Saint Silvia. Gregory's family was renowned for their piety and service to the church. His two paternal aunts, Tarsilla and Emiliana, also venerated as saints, played a significant role in his early upbringing, instilling in him a profound sense of faith and devotion. The family's wealth was evident in their multiple estates, including a grand mansion on Rome's Chelian Hill and extensive land holdings in Sicily, a testament to their social standing and economic power in the late Roman world. Gregory received a classical education befitting his high social status. He excelled in his studies, mastering grammar, rhetoric, and law, becoming a highly proficient writer and orator. Despite the promise of a successful secular career, Gregory felt a deep spiritual calling. He chose to renounce the material comforts and political ambitions offered by his family's position and embraced a life of monastic simplicity and spiritual contemplation. Around the year 575, he converted his family's palatial home on the Caelian Hill into a Benedictine monastery, dedicating it to St. Andrew the Apostle. Gregory himself became a monk, embracing a life of prayer, study, and service to God. Gregory's monastic retreat was short-lived. His administrative talents and diplomatic skills were soon recognized by Pope Pelagius II, who appointed him one of the seven deacons of Rome, a position of considerable responsibility within the church hierarchy. In 579, Gregory was dispatched as an envoy to Constantinople, then the capital of the Eastern Roman Empire, a mission that lasted six years. Though he achieved little political success, his time in Constantinople exposed him to the richness of Eastern Christian thought and liturgical practices, experiences that would profoundly influence his later writings and papal reforms. Upon his return to Rome, Gregory resumed his monastic life, becoming abbot of his monastery. However, his reputation for holiness, wisdom, and administrative acumen continued to grow, and in 590, upon the death of Pope Pelagius II, Gregory was elected pope by popular acclaim. Despite his initial reluctance, he accepted the weighty responsibility, recognizing it as God's will. Section 5. The Rule of St. Benedict. As Pope, Gregory faced numerous challenges, both internal and external. The Lombard invasion of Italy posed a constant military threat, while plague and famine ravaged the population. Within the Church, Gregory sought to strengthen discipline and promote monasticism, recognizing the vital role monks played in preserving learning and providing spiritual guidance. He was a staunch advocate for the rule of St. Benedict, promoting its adoption in monasteries throughout the West. Gregory's own writings, particularly his dialogues, a collection of stories about the lives of holy men and women in Italy, further popularized the Benedictine way of life, emphasizing its ideals of prayer, work, and community. Section 6. Defender of the Faith Beyond his pastoral duties, Gregory was a prolific writer and theologian. His most famous work, Moralia in Job, is a lengthy commentary on the Book of Job, exploring themes of suffering, temptation, and the nature of God's justice. He also penned numerous letters, homilies, and liturgical texts shaping the Church's teachings and practices for centuries to come. Gregory's writings are characterized by their pastoral sensitivity, their focus on practical Christian living, and their accessibility to a wide audience. He sought to make complex theological concepts understandable to ordinary people, emphasizing the importance of personal piety and the pursuit of holiness in everyday life. His emphasis on penance and purgatory, concepts that became central to medieval Catholic piety, can be traced back to his writings. Section 7, Enduring Legacy. 
Gregory's papacy was a time of significant missionary activity, particularly in England. He is credited with sending St. Augustine of Canterbury and a group of monks to evangelize the Anglo-Saxon kingdoms, a mission that would have a profound and lasting impact on the religious landscape of England and, by extension, on the development of Western Christianity. Gregory's vision extended beyond the traditional boundaries of the Roman Empire, demonstrating his understanding of the universality of the Church's mission. He saw the conversion of pagan peoples as essential to the fulfillment of Christ's command to make disciples of all nations. His support for missionary endeavors laid the groundwork for the spread of Christianity throughout Northern Europe in the centuries that followed. Section 8. The Legacy of Gregory the Great St. Gregory the Great died in Rome on March 12, 604 AD. He left behind a legacy of extraordinary achievement, his papacy marking a pivotal period in the history of the Catholic Church. His administrative reforms strengthened the Church's structure, his writings profoundly influenced Western Christian thought, and his missionary zeal expanded the reach of the Gospel. Gregory is recognized as a Doctor of the Church, a title bestowed upon those whose writings have made a significant contribution to Catholic theology. He is the patron saint of singers, musicians, teachers, and students, reflecting his multifaceted contributions to the church and society. His feast day is celebrated annually on September 3rd, a testament to his enduring legacy as one of the most influential figures in Christian history. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe to Catholic News World's channel. God bless.